bonjour. Je m'appelle donc Arnaud Nazaraga. Je suis né à Paris. Euh, J'ai un atelier. I have an, I'm an artist. I am a sculptor and I am also a painter. I live in Thailand, in Bangkok, and uh, the Saint Exupéry Foundation has asked me to create some collections. Uh, the collections that are adapted for blind people that have been presented in Hong Kong. Now, this collection was presented in 2015. Maybe some of you have already seen this exposition. For me, the challenge was to create some things that were inspired by a literary work, also inspired by drawing. I wanted to transfer, I wanted to express the spirituality of the text through sculpture. This sculpture has been presented at Pacific Place for Christmas 2015. I am a sculptor. I have been a sculptor f since I was 18 years old. And actually, I adapt my works for non seeing people, for blind people, so they can experiment a text. The idea is to make a text accessible for blind people. This book, The Little Prince, has already been translated to more than 300 languages, including Braille language. And recently, it was also translated into Korean uh, Braille for blind people and for other languages for, no, for blind people. It has been translated into many languages and dialects uh, several times. It's one of the most translated books, the second most translated book in the world after the Bible. This was the introduction for my work. Now I will give the floor to Michel Shen, who is the illustrator, together with Ariel Liu who, uh, well, we had this drawing by her over there, and they will speak in Cantonese, I think. Hi. Hi. Hello. 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 就用廣東話會親切少少,同埋希望都唔會難到呢個翻譯者啦,因為我都會用啲比較本土嘅語言去解釋呢本書嘅呢一個香港人嘅角度。廣東話版的小王子出版了正正就是小王子的作者出生地 Top 30 most popular language in the world. writing system. system. 
好完整嘅 language 啦，佢其實唔係只係一個方言咁簡單，佢一個喺 linguistic 嘅角度嚟講咧，係一個好正統或者係好完整嘅語言嚟嘅。咁但係咧，其實咧，好可惜咧，好多人都只係將廣東話當咗一個方言，而非一個好完整嘅語言啦。咁點解咧？其實又有好多原因嘅。咁嗰啲原因自己可以，即、就、係、是、我哋大家都可以探討下啦。咁但係、呃、最緊要我都係想喺呢度表達翻，其實廣東話對香港人嚟講真係好重要啦。咁你下低都見到，其實有兩幅圖咧，係誒，即係你可以見到其實外國人咧都知道，其實廣東話對於香港人嚟講係有幾咁重要。重要同埋語言對於一個地方啦，唔好講國家啦，係一個好重要嘅文化嘅嘅遺嘅產物咁樣咯。咁誒、呃，你可以睇到我特別想講嘅咧，就係、是、右手邊咧，其實一個挪威嘅老師嚟，咁佢咧係教外國人講廣東話嘅，咁佢自己都用廣東話講話冇廣東話嘅香港唔係香港啦。咁所以其實我覺得大家都。即係身為香港人都要嚇諗下啊，廣東話對自己嚟講係即係自己個地方係係係咩價值咁樣咯。咁誒、呃，我都想講下小王子喺香港而家有啲咩唔同嘅，即係係幾咁 popular 啦。咁有一個小王子甜品嘅，咁其實誒、呃、已經誒、呃、即係以小王子嚟做一個 team 去做餐廳啦。咁好似即係 open rice， 好似好似而家執咗，不過唔緊要啦，係啦。咁但係。<笑>係啦，咁即係你可以見到啲甜品都係以小王子嚟做一個 theme 啦。咁然之後，誒、呃、下低都有一個即係當代誒誒、呃、舞劇場都用咗小王子嚟做一個即係表演嘅即係節目咁樣啦。咁所以其實我覺得大家咧對小王子都唔陌生嘅，係啦。咁誒、呃，我哋呢本書講翻本書先啦。其實又呢本書有咩咁特別咧？咁因為誒。呃其實我哋咧係好，即係我都講咗啦，廣東話對我哋嚟講好重要嘅。咁 Thomas 其實都想保護翻廣東話啦。咁所以咧，佢咧特別咧係喺呢一個系列裏面咧加咗一個 session 咧，就係 f o 所謂、呃、外國人啊鬼佬啦，咁就去、呃、了解翻廣東話嘅。誒以英文係啦，咁誒同埋前面咧，其實咧都用咗廣東話嚟解釋翻誒誒，即係可能廣東話嘅音音標啊，或者係誒、呃、歷史啊咁樣啦，咁令到我哋自己人又識得廣東話，鬼佬又可以瞭解多啲廣東話，咁所以呢樣嘢咧，我覺得對於誒、嗯、一啲 collector， 因為其實好 Thomas 咧，佢咧係好中意 collect 小王子嘅書嘅。咁誒、呃，因為小王子都翻譯咗三百種語言啦，咁變相咧，其實有好多唔同世界嘅誒、呃、旅行家咧，都好中意 collect 小王子嘅嘅書啦。咁變相其實我哋都想 cater 翻嗰啲 collectors 去誒，俾佢哋一個好特別嘅 souvenir 咁樣咯。咁呢個就係我哋想着重嘅嘢。好啦，咁講到誒裏、呃、面嘅 facial representation， 即係誒、呃、我哋裏面用咗啲咩特別嘅元素去畫啲畫咧？咁誒、呃、其實咧誒、呃、想都介紹翻啦 ，area 咧其實係畫大部分裏面嘅 illustration 嘅，即係可能講緊比較貼近原著嘅畫咧係 area 畫嘅。咁你見到其實誒呢一啲就係一啲 example 啦。咁誒佢其實都想用翻啲好。色彩鮮豔嘅水彩嚟表達啦，貼近啲誒小王子作者想即係可能簡約嘅 style 去表達翻個故事啦。咁但係咧誒、呃、當中咧，我哋其實都做咗一少少嘅 fine tune 嘅。咁你見到其實誒、呃、右手邊咧就會係沿住比較簡單冇背景嘅小王子啦。咁左手邊咧就會係 area。自己將佢轉咗做夜景嘅，咁點解咧？其實因為咧，我哋之後咧有一個係香港同埋小王子 mix 嘅一個插圖啦，咁我哋就想連住翻兩個線嘅，咁所以就會用夜景去做一個連接咯。咁、呃、其實我都想 show 俾大家睇咧、呃，因為呢一幅畫咧就我畫嘅，咁都快介，即係都俾大家睇下一個 video 就係、是呃、我畫嘅過程咁樣啦。
，係啦，咁、呃、大家睇唔睇到？係啦，咁、呃、我又你又睇我老講啦。咁其實咧誒，點、呃、解我會？呃、想用香港嘅夜景，顧名思義，香港夜景係非常出名啦。咁你都見到我畫小王子咧，其實都想、呃、比較真實啲嘅個樣，因為、呃、我想俾大家感覺佢好似真係嚟咗咁樣，咁就已經跳出咗去本書一啲好簡約嘅圖啦。咁已經係出現咗喺大家嘅身邊，可能甚至乎係喺你隔離個位都係小王子咁樣。咁所以咧，誒、呃、佢就會比較真實啲啦。咁誒，同、嗯、埋我覺得誒、呃，即係嗰啲星星咧，都比較想貼近翻誒、呃、原著多啲嘅，咁就令到即係好似誒、呃、遊離喺真實同埋虛幻之間嗰種感覺。咁呢個就係我畫呢一幅畫嘅誒，係、呃、啦，那個設計靈感啦。係啦，咁就完成咗啦。嗯，咁咧另一幅就係我呢、這個都係我畫嘅啦。咁就會係誒誒以蛇吞象嗰個畫去做一個靈感。咁你見到其實咧嗰、那個外形已經變咗到獅子山，咁裡面咧就會係香港咁樣咯。咁呢個就想融入故事同埋香港嘅一個插圖咁樣。係啦，咁、呃、其實我個、呃、presentation 就講到呢度啦，咁都想同大家講翻，其實我哋全部人都係一個旅行家，係一個 collector 收藏家，係一個大人。其實，但係心底裏都有一個小王子咁樣咯，係啦。咁誒係啦，咁呢度我就到呢度啦。Um, maybe I ask you some question. How how did you meet first time the the little prince? Uh, uh, what do you mean by first time? Uh, first time, did how did you get uh, uh, the, to know the little prince? Ah uh, yes. Uh, 誒咁我講翻廣東話啦，係啦。咁誒、呃，其實我喺中學嘅時候已經接觸到小王子噶啦。咁但係嗰陣時睇嘅時候咧，其實並唔係好深刻啦。因為誒、呃、講緊嗰陣時都入世未深，同埋誒即係對於裡面好多語即係語義啊，都唔係好瞭解。咁所以其實我都誒睇完就算咁樣嘅，係啦。咁但係誒。呃自從廣東話版出現咗之後咧，咁我就再睇翻啦。我係有喊嘅，係啦，去到最尾咁，即係我覺得每個階段睇翻小王子，其實嗰個感受都好唔同嘅。咁誒、呃，我相信台下大家都會有一個即係同一個感覺啦，係啦。咁大家都成年人，我相信睇嘅時候都有一番意味咁樣嘅。咁呢個就係小王子嗰個魔法或者精髓咁樣咯，係啦。Uh, okay, and、um, regarding the drawing, so you decided to be、uh, very close to the original drawings, and uh, transform uh, a bit the drawing by a deeper color. And、um, why did you choose also to change? I mean, to keep the same、uh, the same tone but darker and、uh, deeper. Uh, maybe Arya、oh, yeah, can answer. Yeah. 啊、uh, ，其實我喺畫呢個小王子嗰陣，其實因為原本係想用翻自己嘅嗰種 style 嚟畫嘅，但係因為誒、呃、我哋嘅翻譯員咁，佢就比較想將呢個小王子變翻做，即係比較跟翻呢個 original copy 啦。咁所以佢就會叫我即係想我跟翻啊、呃、最 basic 原作嘅嗰種味道嚟畫出嚟嘅。但係因為我就覺得嗯，可能最最 original 嗰、那個誒、uh, Little Prince 嘅嗰個 copy， 佢啲畫風就比較簡陋，同埋可能就顏色冇咁鮮豔啦，即係會有啲沉悶嘅感覺。但係我又想即係多啲人會睇呢本廣東話版《小王子》，即係就想因為我。做插畫嘅原因都係想因為啊 ，through 呢個 painting 嚟令到大家啊都會感受到插畫師嗰份心嗰份心意，咁所以就用咗啲比較鮮豔啲嘅顏色啦，咁就希望將呢個快樂帶翻去俾香港人度咯。Thank you. And you, how did you discover the little prince? How did you first get the book in your hand? 
誒、uh, ，其實我細細個，因為媽咪佢就會俾我睇好多唔同嘅書嘅，但係其實當時就誒、呃、真係 to be honest 係真係睇唔明嘅完全，同埋因為 Little Princess 佢係佢講緊一個。嗯，一啲寓意出嚟 ，instead of 講緊一個描述一個故事出嚟啦，咁所以其實當時覺得真係唔好睇嘅，但係就一直都冇睇到啦。跟住去到當 Thomas 佢揾我嚟畫呢個插畫嘅時候，咁就為咗令到更加貼近，更加知道當時個啊個、呃、作者聖修百里即係個插畫師佢嘅諗法啦，咁就嘗試就睇咗個英文版，同埋都嘗試用 Google Translate 睇咗個法文版，咁當時就慢慢。因為係係咁睇，係咁睇，所以就會慢慢咁越睇越明得多啲。咁之後就都有俾佢感動到嘅，即係都即係覺得 Little Prince 佢唔單止係一個故事咁簡單咯，佢都係教識咗我哋好多好多好多嘢。即係其實有時呢啲道理，好似其中誒、嗯、入邊一句説話啦，就話真正嘅嘢咧，都要用個心先睇到嘅。你用眼其實係真係睇唔到。其實呢啲嘢我哋好細個可能就會知道咗，但係。當你慢慢 grow up， 即係當你慢慢長大咗之後，你就會俾身邊嘅好多嘢所蒙騙咗啊、遮蔽咗啊，跟住就慢慢就唔記得咗呢個咁重要嘅意思咯。所以，嗯，係咯，我都係 through 呢個插畫先重新再 pick up 翻《小王子》呢本書嘅。Tous, on a reçu ce livre qui est un texte et nous avons dû. <laughs> I can't speak in English. <laughs> so all of us artists, we had this book in English. I mean, in in a text. Sorry. And then we have to interpret by drawings and to to make feel the the the, the what the meaning, what was the deep meaning of the of the text uh, through drawings, through colors, and uh, yeah, it was a. It was difficult work, <laughs> without,、um, I mean, trying to be faithful to the original book, but also making some interpretation, personal interpretation. Okay, thank you,、um, Cedric. Maybe you can do your presentation. So Cedric、uh, is a is a French French illustrator, and、uh, he didn't work on the Little Prince book, but he he worked on the on the life of、uh, the writer of the Little Prince. Uh, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, who born in 1900,、uh, and uh, he, uh, no, not so many people knows his life. And、um, so Cédric uh, uh, did this book with、um, what's the name of the the writer? The Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. No, 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 this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pierre Roland Saint-Dizier. Okay, so he's the one who, who, who did the, the scenario. And、um, Cédric、uh, Fernandez did the, the drawing. So please, can you explain your work? Thank you. Donc, bonjour déjà tout le monde. Alors,、uh, uh, okay. So me, well, I I am the illustrator of comics. I am illustrator of this book, Saint Exupéry, which was published in France. It, there is no other version, unfortunately. I'm going to explain to you a little bit the way in which I work, why I work so, and also the people with with whom I drew this. Now, these are the two albums that we have published already. This comic, Saint Exupéry comic. As my colleague said,、uh, it、uh, deals with the life of the author, not the life of the little prince. Of course, the work is always close to its author, so we can understand very quickly that、uh, the little prince is actually Saint Exupéry. And with these comics here, with these albums here, we can see how、uh, we can see the little signs. Uh, the elements that are going to that are going to take Saint Exupéry to、uh, to draw the rose, to draw the little sheep.、Uh, here we saw. Here we show how all these elements have their equivalents in real life. And we have drawn them in these albums. It is important. It is interesting to notice how his life is there. 
Now, the album that we have on the left, it tells us the uh, the period, uh, the period in which he was a postal pilot. His uh, pilot side, if you if you will. I don't know if you know that. Well, I didn't have any any idea of how. Okay, how do you perceive Saint Exupery here in Asia? For us, he is a legend. In France, he is a legend. Everybody has read The Little Prince. Everybody knows about him. Everybody knows that he is a writer. But not many people know what he did for a living. So with these comics here, we actually show what he did in his life. Uh, first, we begin the album with his beginnings as a postal, as a postal pilot. I don't know if you know what I mean with the postal pilot. Uh, uh, it was uh, well. It was the start of air mail. Uh, of, uh, well, this allowed for communications for mail to be delivered much faster than by train or by boat, and this. Um, Air mailed uh, opened up new roads, and Saint Exupery was one of the pioneers of these new technologies, of this new industry. He would go alone, risking everything, because these were unknown territories. Uh, he would go uh, through stages, he would create postal lines, postal services, and uh, and well, uh, we can see how this is the beginning of his life, the beginning of of the air mail in Africa. When I tell you about danger, we need to know that we have uh, World War One had just finished, had just ended, and the planes that the air mail was using were airplanes that were surplus from the First World World. So when the Arabs would see these planes uh, flying above their territories, they would think that it was a military plane that would come to wage war against them. So it was very frequent. It happened very frequently that they would shoot. They would try to shoot the plane down. Also, planes would crash. Planes would crash very frequently, and very frequently the Arab tribes would capture the pilots. And after they would demand, they would demand ransom, or they would just execute them. So it was really dangerous. We also show in this album how Saint Exupery was somebody that went all the way in. He, he did what he had to do, even if it was dangerous. And if his way of life was somebody that lived fully, we will see this further. But we need to be aware of this because his entire life, he never did things halfway. He always went to the end with it. He took risks. Um, he, well, actually, he crashed nine times, uh, he was rescued, he was a hostage, he was captured by the Moors, by the Arabs uh, in Morocco, and he was rescued. Uh, he was never sure that he would come back, because he, he could be killed at any time. So he would go with he, all his diplomatic acumen, his diplomatic skills, there was this sense already of actually listening and talking with other people. And he created links with these tribes. This is why he, re he stayed many, many years in Africa, Cape Jibin. This is a fort, say a fortress, which had a, a branch of the air mail, of the French air mail. Uh, it was assigned, uh, he was appointed the chief of this branch because he had the contacts with these tribes, with these local people. He was sensitive to the needs and the culture of the tribes down there. And uh, so he was somebody that 
by that time he had these advanced ideas. Now, uh, as for Tom uh, 2, Tom 2 deals with f his further life. It w it's the period in which he's already at World War II with this conflict in Europe and Saint Exupery, who he arrived to the United States. And in fact, he didn't flee the war, no. He wanted to defend his country, defend his fatherland. And this time, this time there was this manipulation in France with the Petain, with Marshal Petain, with Marshal Petain's regime, and he, he, they wanted to make him a collaborator. And uh, it particularly in France. He, uh, they wanted to make an example of him. They wanted to make uh, propaganda out of him, but he escaped this. So, however, he continued his struggle in the United States. When I talk about struggle, I mean he spoke in the radio, he continued writing books about this conflict, especially he wrote articles. He was someone that was engaged, someone who wanted to convince people back in his own land that they had to support his country. Uh, he wanted to fight the rise of n Nazism. He knew that the United States would intervene in Europe in the end, and he wanted to. He w he went to see people. He wanted to convince people th that uh, he they want that they needed to intervene. He didn't stay put for a long time because in the, he he. Uh, he was already kind of old for flying by that time. It was one of his passions. He started flying when he was 13, 14 years old, maybe. He, yeah, he, he always tinkered with, with planes, with small gliders, with uh, bicycles. He, he, he didn't have his, his parents' authorization, but still, he, uh, he still flew on his own. He educated himself. Yeah, well, this authorization, well, well, he didn't have. He, well, actually, his parents didn't actually know what he was doing, but the, when they found out, they actually weren't very happy about it. But he had this idea in his mind from a very young age, and in, at the end of his life, well, it was a time in which he returned uh, to being a pilot for France, and for a long time, he tried to convince people, the army, the American army. But actually, he needed to obtain authorization from the Americans to fly in their own country. <laughs> so uh, he uh, he was already very old. He was already very old to fly anymore. Uh, even he, they had to actually manually help him to enter the plane, he, but he's, he still wanted to go. He wanted to defend his ideas, defending his ideas and defending his fatherland. He wanted to defend everything that France represented. Okay, now I'm going to be a little bit slowly. So here we have the team, the publishing team in Europe, because this is this is mainly a, an European album. I don't know if you have something similar here. We work regularly in a team of three people. We have the writer. Uh, the the one the guy in the middle who is also a journalist in his everyday life and, uh, and the one to the right Frank Perot he is the colorist which means um, yeah I think I think it's a very hard uh, it's a very hard work to do 
to be a, a correct guy, a good colorist. I work with him because well, the colors are important in the works of Saint Exupery. When we see the little prints, we have this sweetness the sweetness of design, the sweetness in the drawings and in the colors. It's almost naive. And it continues with these colors that are very soft, very sweet. Maybe this is a contradiction. Maybe there was this need for having this softness. But, but I'm, I'm improvising a little bit. I don't know if you would think something. You have any idea about it? Okay. Well, well, we have tried to preserve these watercolor ideas so as to continue, so as to preserve to preserve the idea. This idea that he was somebody that went to the end of his ideas, to the end of his intentions, but he kept this sweetness, this softness. He wanted uh, something. He wanted softness in the end. Now I'm going to show you some of the stages of my work. For Saint Exupery, which is a very historical series, we are working in, in when we collaborate with historians, so I cannot improvise. So the next album is going to take almost a year of work. So I am based on pictures, on photographs. This is where I take the elements that I'm going to incorporate into my drawings. This is my documentation so I can know where I can go to. So we can see some archive photos. We can see how my drawings, the drawings are mine, but the colors are Frank's. We are working like this, and we're trying to stay l true to the to the photographs. Now, we don't have many pictures, so many of these drawings are just improvised. They are originals, but we are always going to use, uh, I don't know, for example, when we see his watch on the album, is the real watch that he used. When we see, for example, uh, we can see, uh, for example, a kind of a piece of furniture that he had somewhere in his house. This is real because we have copied it from a from a photograph. So, uh, even the lift, uh, even the elevator that we can see in some of the, in some of the, in in certain parts of the comic, it's identical to the real lifts that were used in those times. For the numbers of the planes, for example, the, num the identification numbers on the wings of the planes or on the sides of the planes are also real. These are the real num numbers. So every time you see a number, we would be told by the by historians, you know what, this number cannot be cannot be here because this plane had already crashed by then, something like that. Uh, we can also see uh, on the second tone, the American period, for example, we can see to the left this building where he lived when he arrived to New York. We also see the hospital in the middle. the Hollywood hospital where he spent some time and to the right we can see one of his friend's house where he lived regularly. So we are trying to be true to the archive images. Once more we can see some images about the crash and for the visibility reasons, I have changed some angles. We have changed some little details, but we keep the original idea. The we can see the plane. The plane to the right is one of the 
Uh, well, actually, well, this is, this plane is one of the real planes that he actually flew. Uh, we can also uh, mention the crash that he had in Libya. From this crash, we can see that the little prince was born. It was Saint Exupery with the intention of breaking a record from Paris to Saigon in Vietnam. He was forced, almost forced, to break his record. He didn't prepare his travels very well. Uh, he, he wasn't very careful. He was almost pressed, forced to take off. And he went, uh, he took off with a plane that was not really suitable for breaking this record. Uh, well, uh, he could have. Uh, he, uh, he, he didn't take enough water, actually. When he crashed, he didn't have enough water for surviving. We can see, we can notice this on the notes by the mechanics. They didn't have but a small flask of water and a small flask of wine and coffee. They didn't have water, they didn't have food, just coffee and wine in the middle of the Libyan desert. This image is one of the most famous ones of the crashes that he had, which shows us, well, this picture was made once they were found. It wasn't made by them. They thought that they were going to die. Uh, maybe this is when the inspiration for the little prince came to him. He knew that he didn't have a long time left, many days left, so he decided to come up with the idea here. Now, as I was telling you, the little prince is the life of Saint Exupery. Now, this starts here with this crash that they had, that they had in Libya. Now here I show you the stages for my drawings. What you have to the left is what we call the storyboard. It's the same thing that we do for a film, for a movie. I don't know if you know, but we have a storyboard in order to know what we are going to have as an environment, how we're going to set up the cameras, etc., etc. We often begin with a storyboard. It's the same for a comic. So I start, you can see the, the drawing. We can see that it's uh, it was made by a child, maybe, <laughs> because it doesn't, it doesn't have a lot of quality. But the important point is to have the narrative, the story set down. We need to see what details we're going to add later. Maybe we'll have some details here or there. Later, we clean it up. It doesn't take that long. I usually do it with these formats that are really small, just some centimeters. Uh, and the text, uh, and, well, and, well, at the text, of course, of course, I already had the text ready. Yes, of course, I will have a script before anything, of course. Well, uh, but it's not included here. So, uh, of, first, they give me a script. They give me that text. It's the same principle as for a movie. We have dialogues. We have the text. I will see box one and a night in the desert, a crashed plane in the distance. It will say so. Well, it's not the night, of course, here, but here we can see uh, the crashed plane. We can see uh, that it's actually in the, in the morning. We can see the sun that is rising, the one who writes the script, he tells you how many images. Does he tell you how? Does he tell you how image? How many images he needs for the text or not? Well, I, I usually do it on my own. I have this tendency. Tendency. I I actually fit the text to my needs, to how many squares I need. Um, Maybe I will develop it a little bit more or less than what he's telling me. This allows me to uh, enlarge some ideas. Maybe we'll have some boxes 
some further extra boxes which will make for a richer reading or some changes that will be faster or slower than others and for me this is important it's important to have this rhythm for the telling of the story after this we have uh, well i will simply take the ideas from the storyboard and then i will transfer it into paper i will do it more into detail i will do uh, the most definitive drawing possible so that well because at this stage we can still uh, do some uh, some corrections we can make some amendments but if you work with actual if we if, uh, if you don't if you don't work with actual pencils then uh, at at least you need to have an album per year this allows me to work faster uh, we i have to find place i have to find ways in order to avoid remaking pages because i made a mistake and then about the text so you need to cut you need to how, how do you do it how, how does it happen with the text it is true that i didn't have the age okay no no i didn't i didn't have it here sometimes i do it sometimes i don't but uh, usually i do it because uh, i design it i draw it with the text already inside with this globe with the with the dialogue maybe sometimes if i have all the text all the dialogue boxes in there maybe they will eat up my space or in any case we would go too fast and we wouldn't have the perception of the the drawing that we all had we have the inconvenience that in case uh, i think it's just half a second each idea when we read the reader of a comic he, he has an impression an idea about the drawing than a visibility he doesn't really realize but he doesn't really look at the drawing he just reads it, it, this could be a work of art of course but uh, the way in which the the reader just casually reads the book or the comic book after having read it this depends on the speed that he uses this will affect the way in which we design it, the way in which we draw if we used either two weeks or two months for a single page when, okay now where do we add the dialogue boxes now dialogue boxes need to be marked regarding where the eyes of the of the reader will be i want to direct the eyes of the reader somewhere in my pages so in the script i have a phrase i have a, this phrase that was already written that was already written usually i have this script and i have this bl this block of text and I think of the images, I think it would be interesting to fraction, to divide the text so as to have this vision that will search all the images, to have these boxes, these boxes on each box, these dialogue boxes on each drawing box. This is a little bit complex as an idea, but that's it. This is the third, uh, well, I... W I want to extend the story without cutting the text. I want to have these impact points. The dialogue box will be a little bit isolated from the page. It is, uh, it is a rhythm that we want to achieve. It suits my drawing style, but it also contributes to it. So we need to think, well, uh, well, thanks for mentioning it, actually. 
Of course, dialogue box will be important. It is interesting to to make it visible already here at this time in the storyboard. Now let's continue. We have the image on the left. We only have the ink, the inkling. As we can see, well, my pages are kind of large. They are almost 50, 60 centimeters long. This allows us to, well, we work in this large format so that when we get to the final stage, when we reduce it, uh, uh, this the, this gives an impression of d details, of being more detailed, uh, and it uh, allows us to hide some mistakes, maybe. And further, we when we work at a larger scale, we have a better perspective on things. We can see the dunes, we can see how we work with softer ideas, softer colors, but if we worked at a smaller scale, it would be harder to do this, of course. So I am not gonna, ex I'm not gonna go further on this. I just used ink here. I don't think I need to explain to you about the inkling process. Now the following image is the coloring. As I was telling you that colors are something that I I work with a very good watercolorist. He knows how to deal with light and we can see the quality of his work here. For comic books we have a level that uh, that costs a lot actually it's very expensive because this perspective, this three-dimensional perspective with the textures and the backgrounds well, we need to have some considerable talent for achieving these effects. I am very happy to being able to work with this friend of mine who has this amazing talent. I continue to work with him and I work with him. I have worked with him for a very long time for several comics, different comics. This is another page. I'm going to just... Uh, go over quickly with it the storyboard as we can see the drawing the drafting he is taking off as we can see and there is uh, so, some di some di there's a di difference of several seconds here now the inking and the coloring we can see how the coloring is the most important stage of course because it gives you uh, the real idea of how it would look like. Now here, uh, he, uh, I, we have several dialog boxes here. We can see the different stages or the facets, different stages on his personality, the personality of Saint Exupery. He was a humanist. He was somebody that spoke to people. He was somebody that took time to understand other people, their way, their way of thinking, their beliefs, because in Africa, for example, he he tried to understand people. He didn't stay only with he didn't stay with only his own thoughts. He was somebody that would go who had. Um, he loved women, and as we can see, he, he, maybe that's his wife or one of his lovers, but we didn't actually dwell on this, so I'm going to leave it there. Maybe you can read the book if you're more interested in this. No, you, we know that he was passionate about flying. Uh, as we can see uh, here, he felt alive when he was flying, when he was in the air. It was not something about ego. It was, but well, it it could be related to his love of women. But he loved being in the air. He explains that when he 
was up there in the air, he would have a different point of view towards men and people, towards the land that was below. This is a reflection. This is this is all these thoughts, all these ideas. Very often when he flew, he meditated, he took notes. After that, he would expand them, he would elaborate further on them. Sometimes he couldn't see anything when he was up there, when he would be over the sea, maybe. So he he would explain that he would see the stars and he didn't know if they were fires or stars he wouldn't see but a light everything everything else was darkness so we wouldn't know where he would be he would know where whether it was the sea or the earth and he and nobody could help him because his mechanic his mechanic on board he would be sleeping he would see this light and he would start con thinking considering maybe it would be the same as in the, the little pri the little prince of course stars are omnipresent they are everywhere in this text and in the little prince we can see this association when he flies during the night he has but the stars to navigate radio was barely starting the the only compass that he had were the stars his altimeter was not working when he was trying to break the record paris saigon and this altimeter was indicating something that was that was not true was giving false data yeah, it was a miracle that they didn't kill themselves. It was a miracle that they crashed in the way they crashed, and they didn't crash head on. Even they just crashed in a better way. Now, of course, in this. Um, stars are very important for the life of Saint Exupery and also for the little prince. Now, the, the, the last image we have is of somebody going towards other people, somebody that actually wanted to engage people. Santex Supri loved open spaces. He loved to be alone. He loved to look at things. Uh, maybe he would think now I am here on this on this plane looking at the stars looking at the sky looking at the sun but when he would think that he would be dying he would say well I am lucky because he, I am alone and I can see all these and I am conscious I am aware that life is but fireworks life is brief he loved all this he he loved these uh, great landscapes he loved to have adventures like this it was a part of uh, part of his ideas i don't know how many kilometers he flew that's in the south america right on the andes the andes range right yes now these are other images we are of course on the little prince here these images show how for example this um, dog that we can see here is his publisher's dog and everybody called that dog the sheep the lamb sorry so maybe this word the lamb inspired the lamb on the little prince but in reality it was a dog and when and then we also have him riding here we have his publisher coming here to see him and he told her i picked up your dog's name and introduced him here on the story and he actually had designed a lamb the rose uh, was a rose represents a woman Consuelo, who was magnificent, but she, Consuelo, uh, she was an Argentinian woman, and she had a very strong personality. 
And both of them, they have a very strong personality, so they had a rocky relationship. And the fox, the fox that is a fennec, it's a desert fox, which he had actually seen when he was in the desert in Capjibin. So the fox the, is a descendant of the fennec. Everything comes together. I'm not going to explain everything, of course, because I'm going to let you discover it on my book, of course. Now, if you have any questions, thanks a lot, Cedric. Thanks for your presentation. Now, the questions and answers. If anybody would like to make any questions to Aria, Michelle, Cedric, there is a microphone somewhere over there. Okay, he, he, here we have it, it's coming. Hello. Now we're waiting for the microphone. Cedric, th so you have these two books on the life of Saint Exupery, tome one and tome one here and tome two. They haven't been translated into Chinese, right? Nope, not yet. And in English, it's a, a work in progress, yes. Will there be a third volume? Yes, of course. We are tr uh, we are drafting it right now, as I was telling you. Tome 1 was the beginning of his career uh, in the air mail service. The second one covers the period to his death. On the third tome, we will have him in Latin America. This, as we saw when he was flying above the Andes, we are going to develop this. We are going to have this great moment, and he's. Uh, we're going to have this other. Maybe we will have another volume, but I don't, I'm not really sure about it. Thanks. Now the microphone. Is there any questions? Are there any questions for somebody? To Aria, Michelle, or Cedric? Or are no? Okay. <laughs> okay. So no questions. So everything is clear. I'm <laughs> good. <laughs> um, so you 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 did some work before uh, live. Uh, you you want to continue or? Sorry. <laughs> oh, Michelle, you want you would like to uh, add something? No, I'm fine. I'm fine. You you said everything you want to say already. <laughs> uh, we have one question over there. Mm -hmm. Hi, Sachin. Uh, I would like to know that just uh, from the introduction of your profiles, I uh, will know that you. Yes, we know that uh, your words. Uh, most likely uh, about the uh, aeronautics. So uh, do you have a moment that you would like to also become a pilot? Uh, well, of course, I, I was taking some pilot courses, but I stopped because it was very expensive. But yes, of course, that would be very interesting for me. That didn't happen to me so easily. I started working with people that were talking about planes all the time. It was something that happened when I was working my first comic. It was a bestseller, so the editors uh, told me, okay, now he, we're going to continue this uh, with, with flying stories. But fortunately for me, I was get, becoming interested in this subject, so I started taking courses, I started reading about flying. But, uh, but right now I'm working with a comic that doesn't have anything to do with flying or with planes, uh, so I need to take a little bit of a distance, to take distance from flying and planning, flying and planes. Any other question? 
en fait, c'est la première qui est dure à démarrer. Oui, c'est ça. Dans um, votre uh, présentation, vous avez mentionné que The Little Prince est une très importante publication en France. Je um, suis juste curieuse, quand vous faites l'illustration pour la vie de Saint-Supéry, Okay, for for me, Saint Exupéry was somebody that was very known, very renowned before having written The Little Prince. Actually, he didn't actually see it published. He didn't see it published. He didn't see it in the bookshelves. Uh, but he was very renowned, very famous because of his other books, uh, Nightfly and others. They are not novels, they are uh, philosophical works. And I think that he already made his mark with this. Of course, The Little Prince uh, is universal. He, it touches everybody, everywhere. And I think that... I think that... This is this evidence. When we read The Little Prince, we cannot leave it aside. No matter our age, regardless of the elements, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you what elements exactly, but in any case, we are gonna understand the principle. This this attractiveness that people from all cultures have about this message. This is a very attractive message and attractive ideas. This book is very spiritual. It's not, only, uh, it's not just a story. It's really spiritual. And this spirituality is really uh, universal. It's not linked to any religion. Something like... Uh, um, yeah, is outside of religion, outside of the culture, outside of age, outside of uh, background, I mean, educational background. You can be poor, you can be rich, you can understand it. But for France, I think it's because Saint Antoine de Saint Exupéry is a, is a hero. Maybe also because he died as a hero. Uh, we never recover his body. Um, what we did, we recover his, um, his bracelet about 20 years ago. Um, and it was not where we want to find, I mean, he was not supposed to, to crash his plane at this place in front of Marseille. He, he was supposed to be on the east of uh, France, southeast of France, so very far from the place where we found the bracelet. And from this time, uh, even we didn't want to catch the, I mean, to find the plane. So for 10 years, after we found the bracelet, for 10 years, we didn't make any research for the plane. We knew what, where it could be, but nobody were allowed to look for it. So it's like a hero who disappear in the space in the, with the stars. <laughs> but finally, we found the plane, huh? just to tell you. Huh? We, actually, we found a plane which is not the plane of Saint-Exupéry. It's very strange. We found a plane, for the story, we found a plane um, I mean, the, 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 the diver who knew where was the plane, who got the authorization to find it, came down, catch an a, a engine of a plane, and when they clean up uh, the engine, they found it was an engine of um, uh, Mr. Schmidt, I think. It's a, a plane of a German plane, who was belong to a prince. Not the little <laughs> prince, but a, a big prince. <laughs> a prince of, uh, of Germany. It was, there is a very strange story about this, uh, this prince because uh, they found the uh, doc, French doctor found the body, and um, and when they found the the the, the, the plane of this uh, German uh, pilot uh, who was a prince, so finally the doctor said, oh, but I found a body, and they they take back the, this body from the from the from the earth where where he was um, uh, inhumate, and then uh, the the family the German family could make a ceremony about this. So instead of finding the little prince, they found a pr German prince. <laughs> there is a lot of story around the little prince. It's amazing, really amazing. Any, any, any other question? Yeah, okay. we have one, two, yeah, okay. 
aux gens, je poserai la question. Uh, we'll have the question in French. What part of saint Exupéry's life inspired you the most? He was an author, he was a pilot. What part of his life inspired you the most? Well, me, I love the author. If it was weird because uh, I, I was in love with planes, but it it gave me a lot, especially the way he engaged people. It was his works are full of reflections and ideas about humanity and and things and people, so I find that it should be read. There's many other books like Nightfly. Uh, all his his novels are awesome, but but I am touched by this by the little prince by this little novel. But it is true that well, actually, in this little novel, he's already. In, in, in he's already expressing some of the ideas that he would later develop the, in the little prince in some of his previous works he had ideas that later he condensed for the little prince he ar arrived he he got to synthesize some reflections while keeping the sense and the strength of it but now I know his books very well. I had to make an exposition about the little prince with sculptures, but the drawings have this strength, this force. They are even more forceful than the text. When we read it, we, in the end, we don't really understand something, but we love it because of the drawings. And when we are grown-ups, we can actually follow the text better with the drawings. It's, it is related to our lives, but what we remember about the book is that we were all children first, and we remember how we loved the drawings first. This is something, uh, well, f the little prince is, it's something that reminds us about our uh, our, uh, our illusions, our dreams when we were children, and what we became later. This is something that uh, allows us to remember how it was not that bad to be children. We could actually just worry about living, and this is what Santa Supri did. Uh, he, he took risks. He he. he actually he took risks when he tr when he was a child when he tried to fly for the first time when he was a child but the two pilots that actually took him to have his first uh, his first try on a plane he had this dream one of the one of their experiences were not very good actually they died on a crash all pilots my grandfather he was a pilot at 16 years old he flew with saint exupery and these people when they got on their planes they would they would uh, actually leave their dreams, but they wouldn't know if it would become a nightmare, if they didn't know if they would crash and die. And this actually gives more value to life. If we look into Santa Exupéry's life, we see how he he didn't have only one woman. He, at the same time, every time that he would go on a mission, that he would he wouldn't be sure of coming back. He wouldn't be sure that he would live to see tomorrow. This would give uh, a lot of strength to his friendships. Uh, this is uh, fundamental for his everyday interactions with people. Uh, he would lose one after the other. And uh, the, uh, the last pilot that he flew with, Guillomet, when he died, he would say, I have lost my last friend, now there's nothing for me to do. 
yeah, at the in the end, at the end of his life, it was very hard for him. He was in a depression. He was he was already alone. He had lost everybody. He had lost all his friends. Of course, uh, we only had Emily Potes in the end who killed himself. Well, let's say that he didn't. He just let himself be killed. He was found by the people that shot him down. He was not dead yet, but he uh, was actually dying. And he didn't. He didn't want the the the, the people that actually shot down Tank Supri uh, were were they would acknowledge his greatness, and they didn't want to actually shoot him down they had he had they knew that he could have escaped his plane was much more powerful than the people than the planes that shot him down uh, the, the testimonies are that he, i shot him aside but uh, he didn't want to escape so i just shot him i just shot his plane and later we found out that Saint Exupéry didn't come back from his observation mission, so I found out that it had been him. Uh, but actually, we didn't we didn't actually know until some years ago that the person that shot Saint Exupéry down he only spoke recently about it. Uh, I want to raise my question in Cantonese. Okay. And Kesa Lang, um, Kizao 想像就通常都是想做飛機師或者想做空姐 Sega Well, then I think that I have I have seen only one comic, one Japanese comic dealing with planes years ago. I don't really remember about it, but it was, according to me, it, it was about World War Two, about the zero planes. In K, actually, for us in Europe, the most famous mangas are Dragon Ball, Naruto, etc. We don't really follow the manga dealing with planes. This is starting, of course, the manhwa and manhwa and other kinds of comics from Asia. Uh, well, yeah, I, I should do more research about it. I should read more comics about planes coming from Asia. Mm. 
well, I don't know if you actually read American comics. Uh, do you have those kinds of comics here? And yet there is a question over there. The lady in red. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting and lovely night to have all our friends here in Hong Kong. <laughs> well, thank you. It's, um, well, uh, you've talked um, so many interesting things about author and your um, experience with this book. I, um, besides this little princess, i like to know what's your new project? <laughs> Uh, a little, uh, a, a little, a lovely princess, or uh, what's your plan in the near future? Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, no little princesses, but um, the new projects that I may have, as I was mentioning, we have Tome 3, Volume 3 of Saint Exupéry. I'm also doing another comic about uh, about planes, about flying. I cannot give you any more details about it. It's a little bit of secret. I'm also working uh, on the serialization of something that it's very famous in Europe. Maybe there's a translation. I don't know how you can translate the title into Cantonese. But the, I'm working on three albums, three comics right now. I have many projects, but I don't have the time. That's the problem. So if there is no more question, oh, one more question here. OK, uh, after. My question is actually to all the illustrator, uh, because you need to get into the mind of the writer in order to illustrate. Would that lead you to actually have your own writing and illustrate it yourself you know it, it, because you have to it's still other people's idea when you illustrate so w w is it, does it grow like an urge for you to actually write something so that you know the mind your, of yourself and then illustrate so i was just thinking if there's uh, such a dynamic in your minds as well Thank you. Uh, well, the, w the question was to whom? For me or for them? Or for the ladies? I don't know. Thank you for your question. Uh 夾埋一齊嘅時候咧，嗰個感覺會更加強烈咯。咁所以誒，其實誒，我自己身為一個illustrator啦，唔可以代表其他illustrator，但係我都同意係裡面即係自己會有一啲句子誒，會喺個腦
，咁樣就畫曬成幅畫咁樣嘅。跟住即係鮮黃色啦，同埋一啲黑色嘅勾線咁樣。但係而香港嘅呢啲其實只係將原著 image trait， 即係誒。嗯可以話係都算係 direct copying 嘅，但係就喺幫佢哋，淨係幫佢哋誒遊翻唔同嘅顏色，例如係原本小王子可能件衫係誒黃綠色咁樣嘅，跟住佢哋可能就會遊做粉藍色啊，或者其他唔同嘅色咁樣去誒、嗯、令到這本書更加吸引啦、啊。但係誒、呃，如果係我哋嘅。呢、这個廣東話版《小王子》，因為就真係想遵從翻原著咁樣，所以我哋嘅顏色係幾乎係 from 即係參考翻原著，係可以話係一模一樣咁樣直接照住咁樣畫落嚟嘅。但係只不過我哋淨係喺畫嘅呢個手法，例如係用水彩嘅運用啊，或者係即係可能原著佢個星球可能係普通一個深藍色嘅色塊，但係我哋就可能會。即係畫翻唔同嘅層次啊，例如係一個星球上有紫色、藍色、綠色咁樣，但係佢嘅得力遠睇其實佢都係 base on 一個藍色咁樣，即係我哋係會嘗試用唔同嘅顏色嚟令到呢個小王子嘅插畫更加豐富、更加吸引人咯。啊、uh, ，due to time limitation， this will be the last question。so if you have any further questions， you can you may stay behind to interact with the Or uh, interact with the speakers because due to the line uh, time limitation. So let's give a round of applause to our speakers. Thank you all for sharing such an inspiring speech. Oh.